Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Borto anime review. This one's going to be for episode 89, which is called A Piercing Heart. And I thought this was an excellent episode of Borto. Uh, this was definitely one of the best episodes of this arc. Uh, in part because it kind of shifted things back to Mitsuki and, you know, showed us basically that, okay, he was kind of, you know, going undercover, basically. That he had to act and make it look completely believable like he betrayed everyone so he could be the one to get that close to the fabrications that close that far in that he could do this betrayal at this time and take out coup i suppose with the idea being that you know coup is such a threat because he's like particle style seems to have like unlimited energy that could have been a massive problem if he was allowed to just kind of go off Obviously, there's still a lot of um, explanation needed for how exactly this came about. Um, pretty much, like, we're going to need some sort of an explanation that goes all the way back to, like, the start of this arc. How he heard about what was going on here, why he decided to get involved, and how he just formed the plan of, I'm going to go undercover and not tell anyone. But, you know, it was such a great moment of just, oh, he's fired a shot at Borto again. He's handing over the heart to Ku. But then the second he, they they cut to the shot and it's kind of like behind Ku and Mitsuki's like walking past him, you sort of knew what was going to happen. Uh, but they're just like, are they going to commit to it? Are they going to commit to it? And then it's like, yes. Uh, so that was nice to know that, okay, you know, it, the the issue between Borto and Mitsuki isn't that, isn't, isn't huge. They're probably going to need to have a talk, but it should probably bring their friendship to like the next level going forward. Um... In terms of other stuff, I, I think uh, this episode was good as well, just because it like touched on a little bit of everything that was going on in the arc. We got to see Kuratsuchi come back into play, uh, Seki came back into play as well, um, and you know I think outside of like returning to what like Naruto is up to and so on, um, you know it, it hit on a little bit of everything. We got to see Konohamaru and Mitsuki's conversation, and basically just the idea that. Mitsuki admits almost straight away to Konohamaru that like I have something going on here this is my will and Konohamaru just confirms to him no matter what happens you know, you'll always be part of um, Team 7 like you're part of the team and I think that was another thing that helped to kind of really confirm and make it so that like okay the, the, the betrayal wasn't so much of a shock but it was still a really notable moment in this arc where it, it felt like they really played that betrayal like it was Mitsuki making a big decision so good acting on Mitsuki's part that he was able to do that but it's also highly emotional because they set up the Mitsuki's friendship with Sekie so much so the setup for next episode the preview for next episode looks amazing because it is going to be this case of Sekie feeling completely betrayed and us feeling a little bit of sympathy for him because he seemed like kind of the nicest of the group but he still wanted a human heart he was still going against you know their orders and I think the one time we saw him fight you know we got a sense that he still is like the others and he's a little bit kind of maybe crueler than you think but that's what's going to be interesting here Mitsuki's not going to want to kill Sekia he's going to want to try and help him and what exactly you know that means going forward is going to be fascinating so this is going to be I suppose the I suppose next episode maybe the one afterwards is going to be the the real sense of why they spent so much time showing Mitsuki kind of becoming friends with everyone. Like, what is going to be the resolution with regards to the whole um, artificial human arc that we've been kind of playing with here? Uh, is it that Sekie somehow finds a way to survive through all of this, or what? I think that it made sense that they Ku is the main kind of threat they want to get rid of, because he's really kind of rebelling against his orders, but... Um, you know, there there was notable moments in this, uh, like lines of dialogue, like Mitsuki saying, you know, uh, you won't become more human when you get a heart. You know, just because you have a heart doesn't mean you have heart. Uh, and, and that's what they're basically playing with, that the idea is like, you don't need to get a physical heart to have emotions. You already have emotions. That's what the show's been telling us up to now, that these fabrications, they already have basically exactly what they think it's just that they need to find a way to uh, I suppose extend their life and they feel it's by a heart but we'll see what exactly happens here 
as far as I suppose Ku and him being wounded here, the end of the episode made it kind of clear that like Mitsuki thought he had taken him out here, he was going to kill him, but it hasn't actually worked. I assume he's still dying technically. Um, there's still the kind of um, the, the the doctor I think is still like a character there who like you probably need to resolve him, and I can absolutely see something like oh if we're playing with the idea of we want to see what happens when one of these fabrications gets a heart. I get the impression maybe Ku might kill that doctor, take his heart, and that's how we'll get to see Ku at full power, and that's what will allow us to have a lot of our really powerful shinobi go up against uh, a full-powered Ku, because we, we got that setup here that um, when they get a heart, they would have a human lifespan, so they'd still only live in around 100 years, but... Um, they'd be so much more powerful because they would have a stable, I suppose, energy source in their body. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I assume they're going to set up like some combination of like Kuritsuchi, Onoki might be involved as well, I assume. Mitsuki maybe, Borto versus Ku. Because Ku's going to be extremely powerful when if he gets a heart uh, with the particle style. Um... Given that, like, even Onoki back in, like, the war, we always kind of got a sense of, like, okay, like, he's he's kind of past his prime. He can still do some big stuff with particle style, but maybe we haven't seen the full extent of it. Um, so, you know, that'd, that'd be cool if we got to see some more particle style jutsus, but uh, who knows exactly what we're going to be doing there. Uh, on the other side of the episode, we had the whole Borto and Sarada being controlled by Kirara. Um... And this was basically just kind of genjutsu, a little bit of kind of puppetry stuff going on here. It definitely had a lot of intensity of just, like, the, the animation did a really good job of getting across that, like, the sheer kind of terror in Borto and Sarada at, like, how close they came multiple times to basically killing each other. Um, and the setup of, like, okay, Sarada Sharingan is going to be, like, the key to all of this, but Kirara made it so that Borto is going to fight with his eyes shut and... You know, that means Borto can't do anything to snap Sarada out of it. So it came down to, oh, Sarada's going to be killed. But then they do a cool, nice little trick thing of her looking at herself in the reflection of the sword with her own Sharingan, placing herself under a Genjutsu uh, to do the whole uh, spike your chakra to um, release yourself from a Genjutsu. And that's how she gets herself out of that. So I thought that was a really cool move from Sarada. It felt like very early original Naruto with the use of, um, you know, those kind of like last ditch trick moves to get yourself out of a, a tough situation. Kirara is still out there. Um, and I assume, I assume Borto and Sarada will probably be the ones to fight her again. Now that they seem to have an idea for how to kind of stop her potentially. Again, I think there's a lot of other there's a lot of moving parts going on here as we enter the the final arc. I think we know that there's only like a handful of episodes left, maybe two or three. Um and we're quickly running out of enemy characters here, um, given that like it seemed like the entire Akuta army was kind of blown up here. Um so we're pretty much down to just Sekie, Ku and Kirara as the the enemies of what's going on here I, I think there's still some akuta active out there but the fact that kuratsuchi freed all of the the stone village shinobi it, it seems like we're we're quickly getting towards wrap up and so the only three characters left are you know as i said ku sekie and um kirara ku i think will still be a threat going forward i can't see them just like killing him in the next episode there's going to be some significance. There's, going to, I think, Onoki will have a scene with um, Ku before the end. Uh, I, I think Kurosuchi probably needs a big moment to sort of like uh, to be the one who sort of ends this kind of threat to the village. Um, but I get a feeling there'll be a lot more kind of plot stuff involved there as well. Because um, like we also know there's like Konohamaru doing something in the background. Like that happened like a few episodes ago, and we haven't come back to it yet. Um. So that, that, that'll be interesting to see. So uh, anything else with this episode? Um, other than just, I, I like how they've kind of left it at this place now with uh, Borto and Mitsuki where he now realizes that, okay, Mitsuki, you know, okay, he, he wasn't bad. He hasn't gone evil. He hasn't turned. He's not leaving as such. Borto still needs to hear, I suppose, the explanation. But just, I suppose, Borto saying that, you know, it, we can't happen right now, we're in the middle of something, but we'll talk later. And just Borto saying that to Mitsuki is like this kind of uh, 
confirmation of the growth there. Like that, yes, Boruto maybe ignored Mitsuki's feelings in the past. Now he's willing to listen to him, and that's a, sig- a signifier of the growth. Um, so that's interesting. You you sort of look back on it, and like the there's the whole thing with the snake. What's his name? Gar- Garaga, uh, who is Boruto still in a summoning contract with. That that seems to be sort of resolved now. I assume they'll once this all wraps up, Boruto will summon the snake. The snake will have a new perspective because Mitsuki actually turned out to be all right. Um, you know, d- does this take anything away from that? Because it turns out that Mitsuki is actually fine in all of this. Um, I don't think so because I suppose the arc with Borto just being more open to listen to Mitsuki is has been okay. I still think they ultimately need to get that conversation right. That when it eventually happens, and Mitsuki explains his motivation and will. Borto's response to that and how significant it is is going to be, I think, a pretty important thing. So um, that's uh, my review for this episode of Borto. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on it. Uh, But that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.